Good evening and welcome to Sports Friday. I'm your host, Eddie Ogoe, and joining me on set is none other than my sports, uh, or really rather what we like to call him, but Sita Mwite Volao, again, I, I, I take precedence, okay. So, uh, our in-house. <laughs> Joining me on set is my analyst, Brian Mushiri. Now, we want to start with today's stories, but before I do, there's a special tribute that we want to pay, and I would actually like uh, my, my, my guest to, to, to be the one to actually do this one for me. Brian. Well, uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Eddie. It's a, it's a somber state right here in the Kenyan media today, this afternoon. True. Because uh, we have lost one of our own to yet a very common player again. It's cancer once more, once again. Uh, it has robbed us of uh, Anjali Gavi. Uh, particularly for me, it has hit me on a whole new level. It's a, it's a different level. I mean, Anjali is one of the ladies I met when I started this business. It's a business where you have to smile, you have to, to come out every week and uh, show your best. So rest in peace, Anjali Gavi. We're going to miss you. And uh, thank you very much, Eddie, for that chance. Well, thank you. You're welcome. You're very much welcome. Now, to begin with, we want to start with the story of Malkia Strikers. Now, Malkia Strikers were out on tour when they, won, uh, when they went to play for the qualifiers for the Olympics. Now, Malkia Strikers still took your Olympic slot. After 16 years of near misses and heartbreak, Malkia Strikers are through to the 2020 Olympic Games after a routine 3-0 win over Nigeria in the last match on Thursday. Paul Bitok Chargers started their campaign last Sunday with a 3-1 win, one win over Egypt and strolled 3-0 past Botswana in their second match on Monday. Then saw off uh, arch-rivals Cameroon at 3-2 on Tuesday. Kenya recent history is regarded to in Olympics is forged in pain and been fueled with emotional energy with the girls having participated last in the Olympics in the two, in 2004 Athens Games. Now, Brian, this is, yeah. this is something that is very interesting because when you think about it uh, and you look at it in the, like, um, it's, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time uh, it hasn't been a, It hasn't been the best 2019 for Malkia Strikers. Mm. But then again, you have to actually admit that for them to get where they are right now, it has been real, it has been serious effort, right? Yes, it has been a serious uh, input into it, especially obviously you look at uh, what they have had to go through. They've yeah. gone through the worst cases, practiced in the worst stadiums, if I may say so, stadia with no electricity, stadia with no water. But we talked about them last weekend, yeah. and uh, it was actually a nice gesture that we can now see new faces in the Malkia, Malkia strikers. It's, uh, it's a great feature that they brought in, mixing in the old players and the new players, Kohongera to the girls. We now go to Japan for the Olympics at uh, Tokyo, and uh, all the best to the ladies. Yes, uh, when, when, I, when, I, when I was reading about uh, the things that, that went down when they were there, uh, the one thing that actually caught my eye most was uh, Cameroon's coach uh, remarks. Mm. She, he actually said, uh, uh, he's called uh, coach Jean Rene Akono, says, even miracles cannot deny Kenya the ticket to the 2020 Olympic Games. I don't believe in miracles. Kenya is be the better team and deserves to represent Africa at the 2020 Kenya uh, Tokyo Olympics Games. Now, yeah. this is something that uh, comes for a very respected coach. Uh, and this is a coach that actually played against Kenya and lost. And uh, he's a coach of a team that we actually really, really respect. Our rivals, yeah. Yes. So for him to actually give such remarks with such respect, it actually says something about this. It says a lot for someone uh, to say such, especially looking at what kind of team he's coaching. I mean, it's Cameroon, one of Africa's giants when it comes to volleyball. And our girls, Malkia Strikers, did lovely against them. And uh, a big congratulations to them once again. Now on to the next step. It's the Olympics. Everyone is looking at you. All the best. A preparation should be done uh, in, in due time uh, due to the fact that they actually have a lot of time to actually do what is needed of them. Now, we all wish them the best as they continue with their progress and uh, preparation for the Olympics. Now, still on Olympics, Okwiri makes cut for the provincial Olympics boxing squad. Olympic Olympian and professional boxer Rayton Okwiri is the surprise inclusion in the provincial national team men's and women boxing team from the for the. African qualifiers for 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. But the boxer will have to forfeit all the titles that they have in case they are going to the Olympic. Now, Okwiri, okay. right, this, this is what the, uh, caught my eye the most about the story. Now, Okwiri has been included in the 2020 Provincial Olympic squad. Now, he has not yet been selected to be one of the people to go through, yeah. but 
professionally ako kwa wasi ana na chaguo now, now the interesting part is for him to actually participate in the olympic scheme he has to forfeit his title it, now most people most most professional boxers have really really spoken against this most of them didn't want professional like uh, title holding boxes to participate in the olympics because olympics is the opportunity it's supposed to give opportunities to those who are trying to make it through now others say it is unfair for them to have to forfeit their title for them to actually participate ni kama unaambiwaje ndo uko mzalendo lazima uache zako nyuma ni kama kufuata yesu <laughs> but only with Christ will you promise you something in the, at the end of it eternal life si hata hii una promise wa medal in case utashinda in case there's a big if there's a big if and difference but do you think it's fair i honestly don't think it's fair because you this is someone who's fought for it i mean ni title yangu this is the same thing you tell me uh, for you to come usikuje na gari kwa nini si yangu but here's the thing you're the not feeling it the thing has been there for quite a while now i think since 2004 or 6 rather yeah. uh, and the fact the, the funny part of the, about the whole story is just to show how much okwiri is nimzalendo or yeah mwenye amekubali in fact he has no problem with it he is very much willing to actually let go of the title if it means he has to put if it means he will participate in the olympics he says that is the one thing that he doesn't have and he needs okay you see also you kind of look at it from a point of view eh? this is a sportsman yeah. he's into what he's been doing probably and uh, this is the olympics he has probably would like to so badly want to get yourself in that and if you want something so bad you have absolutely no other way other than to run for it and get it and go get it well so all the best for query and personally i actually think this is a very remarkable thing that he has done and he has acted like a leader and he has acted like a mature person and personally i really wish him all the best as he goes for the olympics and due to the fact that they have enough time to prepare i seriously hope and this one i stress so much that they do regard each and everything that will fall upon them throughout the tournament especially yeah. the conditions of the weather yeah. now moving on still on olympics everyone is still getting prepared and so many people want to go for the olympics it's a rare chance it's a rare opportunity and it never comes every day and so for those who have the chance are still fighting for an opportunity or a seat to go through now kipruto is set for a valencia 10 km road race world under 20 10000 meters champion ronex kipruto will be lining up for the valencia Ibreja 10 kilometers road race on Sunday. The Doha World Champions 10,000 meters bronze medalist is optimistic of performing well. Kipruto said that he wants to be in the Kenyan team that will represent the country during the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Kipruto will be the will be competing against European half marathon record holder Julian Wanders from Switzerland and reigning champion Ethiopian Chala Ragasa among others now everyone wants to go to the olympics yeah everyone wants to go to the it's olympics the and everyone stage of wants them all. this opportunity to come even yeah. but it's a question of who deserves it more than others now yeah. in other areas we do we not hope. have eh? we hope we hope yes now in other areas we don't have so many people contesting for a certain spot but in when it comes to kukimbia hiyo nayo unajua tuko na watu wote like in fact it's like a, a, a quarter of a quarter of Kenya in Kenya yeah. so <laughs> yeah. according to the world out there actually we all run <laughs> we, oh, we all run we we all run. some some of us are better than others yeah. <laughs> some so of us are how, how do you think uh, the people that are organizing for this should actually go about it in selecting the team that is go to go to represent us as simple as the best man deserves a chance as the be best man deserves the, a chance we now, have there has been cases trials. there has been cases of course before yeah what to bribe what to taftiwa especially those that are well established athletes they tend to not give this young athletes a chance yet these young athletes are really are really um, they really this young athletes you look at it uh -huh. they actually really energetic uh -huh. they're really big uh -huh. they have a chance to grow and be the best version of themselves mm -hmm. and uh, i personally believe that uh, you can always have that young person and uh, there's no need to let's just do things the right way let's just do things the right way it's it's a, that's a that's how it's supposed to be that's do a good message. the right way that's a really good message and i actually do encourage that because it's it's really really hard for you to actually train your whole life do the best that you can and then lose to go to a, a tournament or a competition that most people actually dream to even have the chance to witness let alone participate in look at uh, someone like pruto he's uh, he competed in kasarani for the under two under 18 championships he won competed uh, last year 10000 meters he won 
he's gonna. You said he's he lining up for Sunday's event. Yes, ten. we wish him the best. Under 20 is coming into Kenya in July. In July. We have a leg in July here True. in Kenya at Kasarani. He's probably going to line up. True. And he, he, has he, he is the champion. He is the champion. He has to defend his he championship. Has to defend and his title. we look probably he's going to win that. So when you start giving this young athlete such great and big platforms, you remember Kasarani, 60,000 people, packed stadium. True, You're 18 years old. You've never seen such a big crowd. Everyone's chanting your name. It's a great platform for these young kids. Let's give them such. Let's give them such. So we actually do hope that all will be well during the preparations and that there will be no cases of rivalry just like we've had uh, in cases before. But then again, what can we do? We can only pray and hope that all will be well. Now, moving on, we do have a bad news as FINA suspends Kenya Swimming Federation. The participation of Kenya swimmers in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics is in limbo. After International Swimming Federation FINA suspended the Kenya Swimming Federation KSF until they hold elections. KSF last held elections in September 2014, but despite constant notice by FINA, they have failed to hold elections prompting to the world swimming governing body to act. FINA had granted the Kenya Swimming Federation a deadline to conduct elections no later than June 30th, 2019. A second deadline on later that October on 30th, 2019, October and thereafter extension until November 30th. However, the deadlines were not have not been met by the KSF and the elections have not yet been conducted. Now, this is something that is very serious. Now, from everything that I'm reading here, it's it sounds I, now we haven't yet heard no, from what is that? We haven't yet heard from uh, KSF, but from everything I'm reading here, this is neglection. Uh, this absolutely. Is, this I is mean, like uh, not taking things seriously. But you see, the, there's this, eh, uh, it's, uh, it's very wrong. Because the, the, and position. the worst part is, I think, to, to, to me, is until this point, they haven't yet come out to speak on their defense, to say that we have not held the elections because of this, this, they this, and that. Silent. They just went silent. Yes, and uh, I was actually reading an article by a friend of mine. Yeah. He's called uh, Kenya Njui. He writes for the Daily Nation. Yeah. And uh, it clearly shows you that these guys were served with constant requests. Do your elections. Do, do your, your ele elections. Even letters sent to us to do our elections. How do you explain that? Um, I don't know. Probably you look to mention something like uh, these leaders don't want to do such elections because they want to sit at the top and keep squandering our money. That's what. That's my own view. If I, I can decide to say that because what other reason do you give for not being yeah, elections since 2014? Yeah, when you think about it, this is Kenya. And when someone else doesn't want to come off leadership, it's, it's, it's most You like just a, start doing things haphazardly and uh, probably not... Not in the but you know the, the reason why they're actually making it through. I think if if you could actually assist me in this one is because most of the people don't actually really pay attention to such organizations like KSF. Now, yeah. so we don't know much about what yes, is going. Yes, they're not so it's, Yeah, so it's really easy for them to actually go on, 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 on. Yeah. Without us even giving a lot of pressures. But it's really unfair for those who are actually willing to participate and those uh, athletes yeah. that were attacked attack Kwanda Kwayo race uh, to the Olympics and they're being denied a chance because the leaders failed to take an election. Something that could actually be done I think in a day or two yeah but they just want to take their time to do it now this is really unfair but then again <laughs> it's Kenya man 2020 <laughs> we thought we would have a new quarter, it's really it's sad fine. that we actually have to say that it's Kenya it's really really sad but then again I can actually only agree with Brian because this is really really disappointing for you people we really hope that things will change moving forward now moving on to international there are a lot of stories that are really packed we want to try and talk about transfers and the things that have been happening throughout the week now the one thing that i actually wanted to start with was the barcelona game against atletico madrid now that was a real thriller it was really entertaining and so many people were really 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 hoping that actually despite everything that has been said about barcelona this year Juan Genyorosh atletico no, Atletico is a good team. <laughs> but when you have to know how to you have to also you have to also consider you have to also consider that this hasn't been a good year for Atletico. But then again, they're like Manchester eyes. United. Yeah? They're like Manchester United. <laughs> they turn up in a in a big game. But you know the the, the funny thing about it is eh? all eyes were on Messi. Like throughout all eyes yeah. were on Messi. Adi Leo, all stories are on Messi. Around Messi. Everybody is, is just discussing Messi, Messi, Messi. Of course, Atletico is in a three two, but Messi. <laughs> It only happens when you're the best player in the world. When you are the best at the top of the pile, that's what you expect. You do well. 
Messi kwenda kanisa ni mbaya kukosa kwenda kanisa bado ni mbaya that's just basically it that is what you expect when you are at the top of the pile <laughs> again a chant ni mbaya kukosa kwenda chant ni mbaya kukosa kwenda chant ni mbaya is that kind of a personality everyone thinks his business is their business everyone in the world every football fanatic in the world believes that Messi's business alienda kwani alitumia kwa nini alivaa hiyo trouser leo everyone thinks their business is his business or his business is yeah. Now it was a real thriller, a true thriller as uh, uh, Atletico Madrid actually managed to actually go as far as they went and Walianza Kufunga, they started conceding again and at the end of then it they won 3-2. Uh, Messi again. did disappoint of course CAP and Funga Mabauzake so let's not just actually blame Messi, Pia, Sisi, Wate. Now moving on to the transfers, let's start with the fact that Ashley Hang has turned down a contract extension offer from Manchester United in a, according to Sky Italy. Now this is very this is very interesting because when you look at Ashley Hang's age and then you look at the opportunity of playing for Manchester United, you ask yourself why would a player that of, of his caliber deny such a contract? Maybe you look at it from a point of view where at uh, United there's no culture. There's no at the moment. Yes, there's no culture at the moment. With his experience, he's not being listened to. Maguire comes six months ago, he's already captain. You see? Something to talk think Something about. Something to think about. Probably, you know, actually, even if Ashley Young went to a bottom side, say Sheffield, he'd be listened to. He'd be he'd be the boss in that in that uh, dressing room, and that's probably how I look at it. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I actually do agree to some extension, but I actually thought to myself that if I wanted to retire or I'm heading to age of retirement, I would actually want to retire in a club that then has want one, prestige. Yeah. Um, but you see, also playing for United is so much pressure, for especially for someone as uh, with uh, his experience is wonderful. He can play United all day every day, but. Uh, I believe that uh, it is probably is time for him to move. Because also you look at uh, who he's playing with now. The only player who are united Monyoko, the same age na Ashley Young, when you are united ball vizuri is on my days. Labda to David De Gea. Ni coach Arsenal Sai. I imagine. Ni coach Arsenal Sai. Ule mwingine and coach Chelsea. Interesting, really, yeah. really interesting. Now, uh, we also have the story of Jordan Sancho. Now, Jordan Sancho was, has been reported to go to a lot of clubs, but Borussia Dortmund are still having a hard time in keeping him due to the fact that he actually really wants to leave, but Borussia are not ready to let him go, at least not in January. Now, Jordan Sancho has been a speculator. I think, I don't think Kuna Tima Even Chelsea. Even Chelsea. Chelsea. Even, now, you talk Chelsea, you talk Man City when you're not a you talk about Real Madrid. Now, you talk about, like, there are so many teams that want Sancho. Jagan Klopp recently came out and said that he's no longer after Sancho, but still. You, it, he was still in the list, you know? Yeah, you say that and then some in Africa and he's still and on uh, market and boom. And, and then Liverpool boom. na mapesa. Yeah. Uh, but do you think, okay, player. which team do you actually think that Sancho are fitting the most, like the best? You know, uh, look at, uh, let's just look at where he plays. Right now, Dortmund. I think, yeah, even the position, where does he play now? Uh, on the left and uh, can play on the left on the right yes. and uh, as a central attacking midfielder uh, i don't know whether players want angalianga waki 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 sign a contract because you look at city do you look at your playing time when you when you when you're joining such a team if i go to city am i ever going to play is uh, pep ever going to bench kevin de bruyne for me to play on a regular basis not a fake cup or uh, carabao cup on a regular basis can i play for city can I play for Liverpool? Will I ever get game time? Look at Chelsea. Will I ever ga get game time at Chelsea? Probably yes, because there are some youngsters. I come in with some sort of experience, some sort of leadership, bring in some sort of panache in the game, and probably I may, get, I may get some game time. So I look at it, not that I'm a Chelsea fan and uh, biased, but I imagine he best, best uh, decision for me, Chelsea. Best decision for you is Chelsea. <laughs> now, personally, me, I was thinking if he was to go to a better team, uh, uh, Chelsea won't be so, so bad. But then again, Pierre Manchester United really do need players. But so it's all potato, potato. But then, what yeah. uh, at one Moving on. Uh, now, Tottenham have confirmed that Hurricane will be undergoing surgery, which has prompted Tottenham to, uh, uh, with serious need to sign a striker due to the fact that they're still in the Champions League and they have Premier League to contest for, and the competition is not easy. Now, they have mentioned a couple of players, one of them being Musa Nebele from Lyon, and then yeah. we also have Cavani, yeah. who is uh, also available. Oof. But to get Cavani out of PSG is going to be 
Not it's going to be big. But also remember, characters like Cavani have never played in the English Premier League. And they want to do that and before they And they would they love to do that before they, before <laughs> they go and retire. But then again, Hurricane, Hurricane has really, really done well. So for, them, but, for him to be out... But Tottenham with a nine, with a big nine, because... Uh, it's a system that I've seen Mourinho has always wanted to play against. Look at the days of Didier Drogba. Nine, Kulembele Pekeake, Nicolas Anelka. Look at the days of uh, Inter Milan as well. Even he's the one who brought in Benzema uh, at uh, Real Madrid. A, a solid nine. Amekua kita kaptizana, a solid nine Kumbele. So you bring in Cavani for Tottenham. Ah, that's it. At a fill in the boots. Yes. Well... <laughs> Me and SG. But then again, dude, okay, the both players that were know, I think both of them actually do fit in so well. So either way, me, I think they do have a striker if they can purchase one of them. But then again, the Mourinho and the Cup on top, so what do you expect? In, 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 the, in the absence of Hurricane, and uh, they don't buy. Because last season, we've seen it. Tottenham have begun a whole season without buying a single player. Yes, so they will force Son Kuches up. And Son has a very, very unique way of participating, performing well when Hurricane is not around. <laughs> like, whenever Hurricane is not around, Son rises up to the occasion. Sometimes maybe, um, say, as I keep saying, <laughs> when you're normal, but when you leave, as juniors, <laughs> lazima tuji, tuji kakamu, tu wanenani ya kafila po yu position ya. Still on number nine strikers, Olivier Giroud is set to leave Chelsea. Now, Olivier Giroud has been lacking playing time ever since he joined Chelsea, or rather, ever since Lampard took over Chelsea, and he wants out. Now, at the moment, there are a few teams that are looking at Giroud from France to Italy, but the biggest team that wants him the most is Inter Milan. Now, Inter Milan have actually pledged in their bid, yeah. and it's all yet to be known if Giroud will be leaving. Now, you are a Chelsea fan, so you yeah. tell us, do you feel bad losing Giroud? Because I can tell you as a fact, as an Arsenal fan, I felt bad when I, lose, I lost Giroud, because Giroud may not be that kind of a number nine, yeah. but there's something that he offers that not, not so many strikers offer. You might not offer. quite see, yeah. In fact, the last time I saw a striker offer, Giroud Oscar offers me Andy Carroll. All you need to look at and see is that with all that lack of game time, Giroud has never missed a France game. He always starts. Again. And you look at the number nines at France. There's Benzema. There's uh, now Giroud. He's probably competing with Benzema. And uh, I think and I feel it's tough because obviously Giroud is the kind of person who gives you an equalizing goal, a headed equalizing goal at 89 minutes. <laughs> at 89 minutes. Yes. Out so, of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Just a headed. So we might lose that. Now, I wanted to discuss this Giroud incident because one thing is uh, Chelsea has, uh, are the people that are mostly looked upon on this transfer window, seeing that they've never signed anyone in the previous transfer yeah. windows because they were banned. Now, Chelsea are also in the market for a striker because they also are going after Dembele from Lyon. Now, when you take that into consideration, Chelsea already have three strikers at the moment. Olivier Giroud, we also Tammy do Abraham. have uh, Michi Bachuai yeah. and the Tammy, Tammy Abraham. Now, Tammy Abraham has been performing excellently. No so, one can actually yeah. take the heart out of him just that easily. But Michi Bachuai is also set to leave Chelsea on loan to go to Aston Villa. Aston Villa have inquired and Chelsea are yet to respond. But when you think about it, is it the right time to actually let these people go, considering the fact that you're still also on the Champions League and also, again, Moko Premier League? It's not, it's, not, it's not right. I don't feel it's right. Not unless you go in and spend big time to bring someone in. I think Personally, I would have thought that I prefer let Akwanza Dembele aingie, tuone ya and then yeah. Patiana Sasa And then you can, you can think about. But you see, football Because we, have, we still like have we FA think. to think about. Yeah. And FA is, is a trophy that has so much respect. No, in Kenya, I realize that not so many people actually know this, but FA Cup is the oldest trophy. It's the oldest yes, tournament, the oldest in, the tournament world. in the world. So we here in Kenya, we don't give it that much respect. But I tell you the truth, when you go to UK, I have not been there, but I know. When you go to UK, <laughs> it has the most respect. Yeah. So to me that out. And it's really, really strange. But anyway, all in all, Michi Betray. Do you think it's the right time to release him? Abso obviously not the right. I actually feel Bacho is a really nice striker. You know, if I was Lampard, I'd, I, Tammy Abraham has come in and surprised all of us. But if I was Lampard, uh, in the beginning of the season, I've started with Bacho. But uh, he's, Tammy Abraham has actually proven himself. And uh, it's a nice fairy tale story. We look to see where he's going to end up. And it's the first season that he's starting alone. Bacho to Aston Villa. He's going to be big. Aston Villa might actually survive relegation because of Bashoi. Now, me personally, I think, uh, yeah, they really do need Bashoi. When it comes to Chelsea, 
I would really, really like to see where Giroud settles. But I think bringing Giroud in, might go to Italy. But Inter I Milan. think bringing in De Dembele is a really, really good idea. Personally, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Now, speaking about Inter. Now, Inter are out in the market for so many, many players. Atas Union is happy, Animal is happy. It's human loyalty to a pesa. But all of a sudden, Inter are looking after everyone in the There's market. There's something that Antonio Conte does. I don't know. He's all of a sudden, Brainwashed. they even have the audacity to go after a Barcelona player. Now, right now, they, are, they want Arturo Vidal to mm. come in. Now, Badu Kunastoria, Eriksen, Aijal Kamilishwa, Iko Badu in the loop. Yeah. They are now looking at uh, Giroud. They already have Lukaku. They <laughs> yeah. Man, these guys are out in the market, and I think they're trying to make a statement. But when I think about it, bringing in Arturo Vidal, if they can actually manage to bring in a yeah. Vidal, yeah. that would be a signing of a lifetime and it will actually really change the inexperience that is in Inter's midfield. You see Inter Milan now actually wants to stop the dominance that has been there by Juventus. That's what they want. They want to stop that dominance, they want to be the best and the next big team in Italy. I think that's what uh, coach Antonio Conte is looking at. And uh, looking at how they've been playing, they're still a bit adrift of the gelling part. They're not playing as, as we would all expect. But bringing all these players, Inter have actually a lot of money. They have, they have some, some chums. So bring in this kind of guys, bring in them. And uh, team A yako na team B yako ziko fiti, so that home. you can compete in your league, your cup, and you, the UEFA Champions League. Now that's all for transfers. We'll be looking at more about transfers next week. But today we actually want to, Apa Maltumifika, I think we want to look at the fixtures now. Tomorrow there are a lot of games that are being played and most of them are very, very, very much interesting. Some of them not so much, but then again, in the football, so what can we do? One of the games that will be played tomorrow, if my director can actually give me the the fixture KPL uh, we have games in the Kenya Premier League that are to be played tomorrow some of them are very interesting because many look on as Yangalia and by the way the Kenya Premier League although despite the financial constraints yeah. that on a PTSI they are yes they are really 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 trying I mean but uh, in I our hinder I was listening to a conversation with uh, Branwell Karamoja who's the CEO for Jazza study this morning and uh, it's a big one. Let's it's just a big look one. at the fixtures. Man. Now, on the fixtures tomorrow, we are on Sunday. This one is on Sunday. Okay. On Sunday, we do have uh, Sofa Paka versus Zoya Sugar. And then we have Chemel Sugar versus KCB. And then Kakamega Hombos will be welcoming Gold Maya. Now, this one is always a very interesting match. And this one was one of the ones that I was talking about. One of the ones. <laughs> and then we also have Ulinzi Star versus Western Steamer. Kisumu Stars uh, versus Postal Rangers. Bandari versus Tasca. Madara United versus Cario Bangi Sharks. AFC Leopards versus Wazito. Now, the other two that I was talking about was Madara United versus Cario Bangi and AFC Lopez versus was it the slam derby uh Mathara United versus yeah there, there is a slam derby and, and uh, then uh, we uh, have AFC Lopez versus Wazito. was it also another big one is Bandari, Bandari versus, versus Tasca. Tasca. Yeah. This one, well, I mean, when you look, if you're a true Kenyan Premier League follower, you would actually realize that these are very interesting games to actually follow tomorrow. Personally, it's and Naruto and Wapi, but let's just say what we think. Kakamega Homeboys versus Gormaya. Brian, what's your take? Gorma here, 2-1. Uh, AFC Lopez versus Wazito. 2-2 two, two draw. 2-2 two, two draw. Madara United, Karibangi? Karibangi Sharks win. Karibangi Sharks win. And then the Bandari? I'm a Tasca fan, so 2-1 to Tasca. We are Mongia Kama fans, you're Kama analyst. <laughs> now, moving on to the Kenya, uh, to the EPL, we also do have interesting games that are to be played tomorrow now. If I can have the fixture, please. Let me just take you through the fixtures for the <laughs> English Premier League because <laughs> I know we are, we are time bound, our directors are asleep or something, I don't know. Brian, I don't go back to Voda. I don't go back to Voda. Director Yuko, Director Yuko. I said, my cousin was in my father, who can But still, Kesho Kuna game again of Kubo Sana. We have the one of the biggest games tomorrow. Of course, the Ali. Early London Derby, there's a London Derby tomorrow. Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. You're going to be beaten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Arsenal fans. Now, hey, hey. Oh, today, Arsenal let's fan. start with today. Today ah. we have Sheffield United versus West Ham. This is a very interesting match because Sheffield Wame Kuja out of nowhere and they're performing like never before. They are very, they they're are top, top, top 10. Yes. Yeah. And West Ham signed a new coach. Mwenye Aku Kam na Ujinga. Ame Kam Tuna. Boom. Ame Anza Tukazi Tahari. And then we have Everton versus Brighton. Manchester United versus Norwich. Now this one, this one. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Wolves versus Newcastle. Bournemouth versus Watford. We also have Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. 
this will be the first match to kick off tomorrow, by the way. Leicester City versus Southampton, Chelsea versus Burnley, and then Tottenham versus Liverpool. And then we finish up also all with Aston Villa versus, versus Manchester, Manchester City. City. Now, Tottenham versus Liverpool, that's the biggest game. Jagen Klopp came out and says he will not underrate Mourinho under no circumstances. So let's wait and see what happens. Now, Brian, what's your take on this ones? Manchester United versus Norwich City. Um... I'm no, thinking, no. me personally, I'm thinking, Robert, what's your name? No, I'm not going to be able to get 